Hello, solopreneurs, uh, and welcome to your Maximum Bliss Accelerator Moment, talk number four on engaging your audience. I'm Daniela Sione. I am a six-figure entrepreneur working on seven uh, and a lifelong creative who created the Coffee Break MBA program, which is a course coaching and community for creative solopreneurs who want to start or grow their online business. And I do these free talks every week to uh, reach out to those who are not inside our community who are thinking about uh, starting an online business. And uh, it's just baby steps in to, to give you the overview of everything involved. Um, so last week we were talking about finding your audience and this week we're going into engaging your audience, which if you remember my quote on marketing, uh, marketing is, uh, finding your audience, engaging them, and then changing their lives. So today we'll talk about the engaging them part. Um, once you find them and start to gather your people, uh, the next thing um, you want to do is prove to them that they're in the right place and show them that you are the right person for them. Uh, and you do that by giving them the kind of content they want to see. So how do you figure out what kind of content they want to see? Well, hopefully you and get you talk to them or you but if you haven't a, a very easy uh way to go is think about the kind of content you want to see in the world uh because as i said last week pretty probably your audience um has the same uh, sort of uh likes as you so what kind of content do you want to see in the world so for me, um, for a long time before lockdown in the before times, that was courses like live courses and free talks and live script readings and comedy shows uh, the, relating to the kind of businesses I was running back then. And of course, now um, everything I do is online um, and I my content uh, in, includes a, a YouTube channel and live free talks like this one and uh, something I'm a huge fan of as both a creator and an audience, and that is uh, five day challenges. Uh, now I'm actually, I actually do have a course uh, called the five day challenge challenge, which actually trains you on how to create an effective five day challenge for your audience. I'm going to be doing that in January. I'll definitely post about it on my uh, Facebook business page for coffee break MBA. We did it once last year and the results were fantastic. So I'm excited to do it again. But um, I love the five day challenge because um, I like to use my brain. I like to solve problems. I like to learn a skill uh, that I can use for life uh, to help me improve my life. And that's um, that's what I believe my audiences also want, because um, my audiences are a lot like me. I've got a pretty smart audience. Um, it, you know, if if people didn't want to um, learn anything, um, then they're probably not my audience because all my all my products are about education and um, trying new ways and strategies and, and processes, right? So um, it, it's all going to be the way you engage your audience is all going to depend on what you want to offer and what your product is going to be. But as an online course creator, um, I love challenges because look, whatever product you, you uh, are going to offer, uh, for me, let's say it's an online course that's several hundred dollars. You're not going to find your audience and say, here's my online course for several hundreds of dollars, right? <laughs> you want them to get to know you first. You want them to make an informed decision as to whether or not you are the right teacher for them in the case of an online course. So um, you do things in baby steps. So you take the time to do some free talks and get to know them, um, do, do live Q and A's where they can ask you things. Um, they can get to know you in these live free talks. Uh, the challenge is um, when you set up something like a five day challenge or a 30 day challenge or a three day challenge, the whole point of a challenge is to get your audience to one transformation that that is important to them, but it's not a huge transformation. So when you're um, selling an online course, when you create an online course, it usually is um, you price it according to the transformation you offer. So a, a bunch of my courses offer a complete transformation from, you know, new person to someone who is ready to work in, a, in an industry where they can earn six figures. That's my both my script supervision course and my uh, comedy writing courses. They offer a huge transformation. But there's other people uh, training script supervisors, training comedy writers.
teachers. So how, do, how are they going to know I'm the teacher for them? Uh, well, the five day challenges that I, you know, there's not really any five day challenges for script supervisors that I've come up with yet <laughs> for script supervisors. I tend to give free talks. I mean, I am a very well-known figure internationally for script supervision, but for comedy writing, I, um, I actually, it, it, that was really fun. Finding my people in the comedy writing space has been incredibly fun because there's a lot of people who teach it, right? There's a lot of different ways in. Um, I had a, I have a unique process of teaching it, but uh, last year, and I think I've talked about it in this, in these talks before, but I, I created five day challenges last year for my TV writing program and my feature film program. Um, and so what they are, are premise creation challenges. Because one of the problems I used to have as a writer was coming up with the premise in the first place. Like that, for me, that was the hardest part. I could, if someone came to me with a premise, no problem. I could, I could do all the character work and, and create the story and write the script. But coming up with that premise, I used to put so much pressure on myself. And this is a hint for you guys, when you're creating content that you want to see in the world, think of the problems you've solved for yourself. I mean, obviously your, your course is going to do that on a large level. If you're a course creator, um, if you're creating a digital product, you might, you know, like if you don't want to do a challenge, one of the other things you could do is write an ebook or create a, a digital product for free or for some pay well, that solves a problem for people. People, right. And uh, so that was a big problem I had the, the coming up with the premise in the first place. So I built a series of exercises and this was is one of the most original products I even have like it's so original it just came right out of my brain right from my experience, uh, a series of five um, exercises once every day for half an hour and by the, the end of the week I promise that most of the people and it, it has been fulfilled so far most of the people taking the challenge will come up with a, at least one if not more personal uh a premise that's personal to them for TV, uh, a TV series or a feature film. And they're completely different challenges, like completely different exercises because they're completely different mediums. They have different storytelling requirements. So people have taken one or the other or both depending on what they want to write. So for me, that's been my favorite product to create and to to bring audiences to me because um, basically I'm attracting my people. I'm attracting people who have had the same problem as me uh, as writers. And listen, not every writer has that problem. Those people skip right to my, you know, if they know about me and if they know I'm the right teacher for them, they'll skip right to my full programs, uh, either from Schick to Script, my TV writing program, or Make Them Laugh for 90 Minutes, which is my feature program. But um, those who are like me, which ha who had an issue with the premise, they're probably going to want what I wanted, what I was seeking. And when I was in comedy school, uh, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, one thing that I couldn't find out there was a clear process like a clear process to really tackle most of the problems that you encounter along the way in writing a script, how to find a clear process that made things faster. So that's what my online courses are all about. And we'll talk about creating online courses in a future talk. But when you're creating a challenge, for example, which is a smaller thing that engages your audience, it's lower cost and lower time commitment. I like five days. You could do them shorter or longer, but I like five days because it's not a huge commitment. It's enough time for people to keep coming back to you every day with something and just getting used to it's, it's just a sweet spot for me in, in terms of the amount of time. And, you know, um, so far, all my five day challenges are forty seven dollars U.S. or less. When I was first testing them out, they were free because I needed to test them. I needed to know if they worked and they worked. They worked really well. So um, I was able to then start charging for them and people see the value in them and, and all of that. And by the way, in my challenges, I offer a free spot in, in one of my programs to the winner. So you can decide if you if you do a challenge, if there's a prize, what the prize is, or it can just be, you know, I've, I've taken several challenges as, uh, as a customer where um, I know I'm going to get a transformation out of it by the end. In my case, it's the premise for your show. Oh, I, I've taken some where you write an email campaign by the end of it, or you create a course by the end of it, or, you know, there's so many um, kinds of challenges out there uh, that, uh, that are very effective in providing one single transformation. Now it's usually a small transformation because you save your big guns for your more expensive course or your more thorough course, right? My, my, uh, Premier price courses is, is uh, they they range between three ninety seven U S 
and fourteen ninety seven US. So they range in that price range, and it you know it really depends on the transformation you offer. If people people won't pay that unless they understand that it's worth it for them. So um, you kind of have to bring your audience in, get to know them, get to know what they want, and then offer them something that they want. Um, so they'll go on the ride with you and decide if they're going to go on the next ride with you, which could be a higher level course or just another course uh, or another product that you have. Um, so yes, uh, it, I love doers and um, I love people who, who think and who uh, like to create. And that's why I love challenges. Challenges are not the only way to, um, to find, uh, sorry, to engage your audience. Cause hopefully by the time they're registering in your challenge, you have found your audience. They're either on an email list or they've seen an ad or they're friends of friends and they were, or they were searching on Google for your product, for something like what you offer, um, you found them by the time they've registered for your challenge. So now it's up to you. It's showtime. <laughs> you've got to, you've got to show them that you can give them the goods that they're looking for. Right. Um, so besides challenges, cause that's not for everybody and it's not necessarily tied to, uh, everyone's kind of, cause listen, this is a Coffee Break MBA is a choose your own adventure. The whole idea of Coffee Break MBA or of creating an online business for me is giving you guys tools to, um, to quit your J-O-B, <laughs> to, to not have to worry, to not have to rely on anyone outside yourself to make income and um, hopefully a really good income. Um, and there's so much opportunity for that. So uh, just giving you the steps one day at a time on how to execute that. Of course, we go into so much more detail inside Coffee Break MBA. I go a lot deeper um, into all the topics that we talk about here on the free lives. However, it's at least it gives you the overview and uh, some of the steps that you would need to take to, to get there. So some of the other kinds of engaging content people create, of course, are podcasts. Podcasts are not obviously as monetizable as, um, you know, a five day challenge that you charge something for. And by the way, you can totally do these things for free. Um, especially as you are, you're proving yourself to your audience. There are different schools of thoughts on whether you, uh, create content for free or how much free content you create. I, th I firmly believe uh, that you have to do a certain amount of free content. Otherwise, how are people going to find you? How are people going to get, get to know you? Right. Unless you're already a celebrity, <laughs> um, you know, people don't know you. So you got to provide some kind of free content. And a lot of people, you know, there's many, many people, there's two huge schools of thought that you never, you always charge something because then you get used, you know, people get used to giving you their money, even if it's $1, there's that school of thought, or there's a school of thought that you provide so much value for free. Uh, people will be like, oh my God, what am I going to get when I, when I pay her? Um, uh, which is like true. You save, you, you know, you, it doesn't, it, it's not like you're saving your best stuff for your online course. You are, but you're still providing a lot of value in all the free content you bring into the world. So podcast is, is one great example. Do you remember Mark Marin before the WTF podcast? He was known in the stand-up comedy world, but he wasn't known to non-comedians. So he really made his name and his brand through his podcast, which by the way, WTF, if you haven't heard it, it's, it's great. He interviews other comedians and celebrities and, uh, you know, and he, and he gets really in depth and he has got that life experience and that experience uh, of you know, almost being a celebrity and now being a celebrity where he can tap into the, the minds of great comics and celebs. So he just started podcasting out of his garage in California and getting friends over to interview them and built an empire. You know, he got acting work out of it. He got, you know, his, his deal on, on glow. He got, um, uh, obviously like he's, he's been able to go on tour and sell out venues where that wasn't happening in his career for a long time before the podcast. Of course, he's got sponsors who pay him on that podcast. So while the consumer isn't, well, you can also subscribe to his podcast and pay a fee, but for a while it was free. So as a consumer, you're not necessarily the one paying him, but his sponsors are. Um, so podcasting is a long road, but it's a very powerful road. If you can rise above the, you know, millions of, there are literally millions, tens of millions, I believe of podcasts out there in the world. So you'll, you'll have to do a lot to shine, but if you uh, have a topic that's really niche, that is like, there's very few people in the world who have a podcast about that. Chances are your people will find you and listen to your podcast 
podcast and you can start building your name um, as an authority in that field, as someone that other authorities go to, to have a chat with online. Um, Obviously, part of engaging your audience is making that product, if it's a podcast or a challenge, as entertaining as possible. And also, you know, if your goal is to teach something, to really teach something, Uh, if your goal is to entertain, to really entertain, um, to get deep, like whatever your goal is, it is reflected in what you choose. So podcasts, of course, YouTube channels, free content. Once again, it's free. It's a long game, meaning like, you know, you're not going to get a hundred thousand subscribers overnight. Although I guess people have lucked out on certain videos. It's very rare and had, you know, a lot of subscribe, a lot of views overnight and there for a lot of subscribers, but it takes a while to build up that channel to the point where YouTube is paying you. So you can monetize your YouTube channel, but you, it takes a while. <laughs> you you got to give yourself one to five years, right? Um, if you're very strategic about it, I believe you can. I have seen more people do it in a year with strategy than people with no strategy not doing it. So again, free content that will bring you your audience and yet they don't have to pay to, to consume your content. Eventually YouTube will pay you um, eventually, hopefully. Um, so that's another way to engage your audience and your YouTube channel is self-curated. Well, everything we do is self-curated, but it's, it's, I think it's great. I think it's great to be able to own your brand, own the way, own how, like, you know, just know how you um, want to present yourself to the world, know the topics you want to talk about, be able to, uh, you can do lives or you can edit them on YouTube. It's, it's like having your own TV channel. What would you do with your own TV channel? And um, what kind of audience do you want to attract? Uh, so that, you know, ideally the goal is to create a business, right? So either they hire you for public speaking or they hire, or they buy your products, uh, whether it's a course or a book or anything like that. YouTube channels are beautiful and free and that's, and they're a great place to engage your audience. Um, Yes, some people do email subscriptions, so they provide a quality kind of uh, email, um, you know, every day or every week, however you want to do it, or they blog and get people to subscribe to their blog, but um, people will subscribe if they find the content valuable. So if you have a unique voice or unique um you know, niche that and your people will find, you have to find the way to get them to your blog. Um, and we talk about that in Coffee Break MBA, of course, but, uh, you, you know, once they're, they're with you, you're providing regular content. And if they find it valuable, they will say, Hey, how else can I engage with you? How, you know, do you have a course? Um, are you ha- holding any live events? Um, and when I say live events in the, uh, pandemic world, it's also virtual events. There were great, influencers and many niches uh, pre-pandemic who switched to virtual events during the pandemic. So instead of having like weekend retreats in, you know, Dublin, like they might've had before the pandemic, they would do weekend retreats online and they would structure the weekends. You know, they didn't have to price them at the you know, five figure uh, ticket fee when you had to go live, but you know, they're still able to uh, engage more people with these virtual events. If you, you can, that's another way you can engage your people, by the way, I've seen virtual events that are free and some that cost hundreds of dollars, some that cost a thousand dollars, but you decide, is it a day of content is a weekend of content bring together all your favorite experts or create some talks uh, uh, either on your own or with it. I mean, it's great to have like a posse of people in your niche that because people will uh, show up for that, if not pay for that. Um, and they'll really start to get to know you as a brand. There are some influencers who I just, you know, uh, heard of during the pandemic this way. One of them is Anik Singal and Anik is like a huge entrepreneur and he has a lot of courses his company is uh, Learn Nation, L-U-R-N. And I first um, learned of him through a weekend virtual event on webinars because webinars was a, a topic I was diving into. And I was like, oh, there's a whole weekend event on webinars and it's only 97 US. And I attended the whole weekend. It was very useful, I, uh, actually. So um, anything like that, that will get the attention of the people that you whose attention you want is super useful to you. Um, if you're a DJ, there's a lot of DJs who made their names on Twitch during the pandemic or continued their brand on Twitch where they have live DJing events. Um, it's great. There's gamers who use Twitch that way. Um, think about what your content ultimately is. You might not know yet, by the way, and that's still okay. If you're still figuring out what the ultimate, you know, the larger pieces of content that you want your business to offer are, if you still don't know, I mean, it's great if you know, because then you can, um, design your 
early engagement strategies to lead up to your bigger thing. So if you solve a smaller problem for someone, that leads them to want the bigger problem. So in my case, the bigger problem is, hey, write your script, right? <laughs> write your script. You've never written your script or you, you don't know a fast way to write your script. That's a bigger problem. They can't even get there if they don't have an idea for a premise. So the challenge product that I have helps them meet me, get to know me and solve that problem of, hey, well, what, what, what premise am I even going to work on in the first place? Once they solve that problem, they're more inclined to think about, okay, so how am I going to write this script? So uh, that's an example from my own business, but you can think of it in, in your own business. What is it that you're going to offer that, that solves a big problem and what are the smaller problems that you can solve help them solve along the way with how you engage them it's a really beautiful strategy it works it really filters out the people who are not your people who 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 really are not into what you're doing and it really brings the people who are into what you're doing closer to you so engaging your audience by giving them the kind of products you want to see in the world, the kind of content you want to see in the world. Um, so if it's podcasting, you're talking about a subject that, you know, does not get talked about enough um, and uh, they're riveted and, you know, there's not, there might be other podcasts on the same subject matter, but the way you do it um, is unique to you. And that it might be the thing that draws them in. Right. I have a friend who does uh someone else's movie. So he was a film critic, is a film critic uh, in, in print journalism, but that um, art is kind of dying out, right? Like print journalism is kind of dying out. And, um, uh, you know, he wanted an outlet to keep interviewing people because uh, magazines and newspapers don't necessarily want interviews in depth to the extent that they were back in the day when he got to interview Eddie Murphy in the 90s and all of that stuff right so he created his own podcast called a someone else's movie and he would interview people at all levels in the film business still on by the way you should check it out it's great his name is Norman Wilner um I was a guest on that podcast once as well so uh yes uh he'll interview people at all levels of the film business about the favorite movie they have that they had nothing to do with so they the only rule is you can't have worked on the movie that you're going to talk about with him for an hour and a half and it's such a great concept. He's got a small and loyal following and he gets to exercise his chops as, uh, you know, his film critic chops and his interview skills, which um, because of the way the world is going have waned. If you're a fan of someone like um, School of Greatness guy, what's his name? Lewin, Lewin Hobbs or Lewin? Oh my God. I always, I always mix up his name. I'll, I'll add it down here, but um, School of Greatness. He interviews people for two hours, like really interesting people who have achieved something great in their life. Totally free content that he has. He's a seven, he might even be, I think he's an eight figure entrepreneur by now. Um, all started with his podcast. So uh, you never know how far it can go as long as you provide the content you want to see in the world uh, and your audience is engaged, they will follow you on the ride a little bit longer. Um, some other things people do is actual level. Okay. In the before times and hopefully in the after times, you're going to actually be able to do live events. What I would do as a new comedian uh, to help fill up my monthly comedy room is once a year, I would do a big fundraiser for Gilda's Club. And it brought a, a whole other level of audience to us by holding that one live event every year. And it was, listen, it was a lot of work. It was not easy. We did it collectively. It was a whole bunch of female comics. Um, we raised something like 11,000 at each event. It's not a lot, but it's not insignificant either. What we would do is sell tickets. Uh, all the money would go to Gilda's club, but the people who would buy these tickets because they were higher price tickets were, and there was like a dinner option as well because we did it as a jazz club were lawyers and CEOs. And like, it was like a, a whole higher level of income strata of people um, attending that show. And we would say, Hey, we do this every month at West End Girls at Comedy Bar. And then they would come to our shows every month. So it is, it was sort of a, a way to put our, our names on the map. So if you do like a big live event like that, whether it's online or in person, I, I miss in-person comedy shows, by the way. Uh, I, I, you know, I had announced my retirement from standup, but I think I'm ready to go back when we can be live again. I so miss that, but that was one way to generate leads. So people call, you know, this content that we provide early on, that's low cost and low time commitment lead magnets, because you're leading your people to your other content. You're leading your people to you and then to your other content. 
Okay. So lead magnets can be free or cost something, whatever camp you're in, you do need something um, in either in either category that brings your audience to, to you, makes them aware of you, makes them understand if this is something they like. People who love that yearly comedy show, they kept wanting their fix every month and, and a bunch of them came to West End Girls. So, so live events can really work. My friend used to say, you're, you're really creating a scene, right? You're creating an event that creates a scene and brings your scene stars to you. <laughs> and in my case, my scene stars, my audience for that show and also for West End Girls uh, were uh, women in couples age 35 to 65, like, you know, really like our audience was older and uh, women in couples. So it was, it was quite perfect. Um, you know, we created an event that was perfect for them. That was also perfect for, to bring them to us. Other people create, like I said, digital products, like a, you know, five strategies to uh, use in crypto. I don't know, like if you're in that space, um, you could publish a free uh, ebook or, or one that you charge $27 for or something like that. And that gives people value and lets them understand that, you know, the topic, uh, you know, and then the, the very important point about all this, because I have a student who runs a conference and she never collected a single email address. <laughs> try to and and i'm guilty of this too i don't collect email like look i'm doing this without collecting any email addresses most of my events i do not collect email addresses but certain ones that are sort of high enough value that i could charge for them if i do them for free i will instead ask you for an email address in exchange that is so you become uh you, you join my email list and then i can communicate with you further i can keep sending you um emails with hopefully good content that is of use to you you. Um, and I can eventually let you know about any offers I have for courses. And that's in my case, but um, my friend who runs this conference never collected an email address in something like 10 years. And, uh, and she's got a huge audience, but she doesn't know how to get to them unless she just posts stuff, you know, on social media and they show up to her conference, her conference sells out. I'm like, okay, please provide something of value. I mean, the whole conference is of value to them, but please provide something where they can I don't know, maybe record um, some because she interviews a lot of high profile guests, maybe record the interviews and allow people to access them online who attended the conference, but they have to put in their email. Um, it's kind of uh, <laughs> crazy to think that, you know, you've been engaging an audience for so long, but you have no way of contacting them directly. So remember that whatever you do, decide to do to engage an audience figure out um, a way that they will be willing and more than willing to give you their email address in exchange for what you're offering. And some people uh, create a contest, like not in terms of the five-day challenge, but they'll literally create a draw or a contest with an enticing prize um, if people subscribe to their email list or they uh, create a quiz. Quiz is a good one because you can... Um, you can subdivide your audience. So if you have like a whole bunch of authors, let's say your audience is authors, um, you can create a kind of quiz, which like lets you know, it gives them something of value, like, or, you know, maybe it's like, oh, what kind, what stage of your career are you at? Or what kind of author are you? And maybe it's a very funny kind of quiz, but it helps you know who's writing nonfiction, who's writing fiction, who's in what genre. And this is a very vague example, but the quizzes help you subdivide your audience. So you know what kind of content will appeal more to who and who makes up the majority of your audience. So that's another thing people do. But whatever format you choose to engage your audience with, um, the important thing is that you, when they, when you have them in front of you, that you've got them right. That you've, that they have your, you have their attention and, and they care and they're, they're anticipating what you're going to do next and what you're going to bring them next. Right. So, so how do you do that? Well, the, one of the most important ways, and I think I'm going to make this a topic for next week, even though it's really like valuable content, but I will, I will do that next week is, uh, telling your story. So telling your story. So your story, when I say your story, you're going to have more than one story in your life, right? But you're going to have specific stories of transformation that people, some people will connect with and some people won't. And the people that connect to your story of transformation are going to be your audience uh, because they probably are seeking the same transformation. So in my sales webinar that I did when I launched Coffee Break Webinar, uh, sorry, Coffee Break MBA, and it's, it's, it follows all the 
the structure and the delivery of a sales webinar, but it wasn't really salesy. Like I'm not really salesy. So I, my, my first webinar that let launched coffee break MBA, um, I told my stories. I had a few stories to tell in that one. And I, uh, about the, the, what I had learned about marketing and the transformations. And for me at that point in my life, the transformation was going from a job to earning 10,000 a month online from home, working 12 hours a week. So that was the transformation I had achieved and I wanted my audience to achieve. So anyone who was interested in that transformation and saw my ad would probably click on the ad. So think about all the, you know, and we'll get more into this uh, next week. But if you think about the transformations you've been through that maybe your audience will want that you can help them with, um, write your story on that. And we'll talk more about that. that this is the, the beautiful thing I figured out about uh, marketing that I didn't know before I started my online business is that um, marketers use the hero's journey as a template for transformation stories. So the hero's journey is what a lot of screenwriters will recognize as a classic Hollywood uh, story mod, you know, story uh, structure. Um, uh, and, and marketers, and because the hero's journey, it, it usually is applied to epic, you know, like the gladiator, you know, kind of epic movies, that kind of storytelling, classic hero kind of storytelling. Um, that is what is applied to uh, aspects of that are applied like certain plot points to marketing to tell your transformation story in a way that resonates really well. So that excited me because of course I've been a screenwriter for a long time before I was uh, into online business at all. So that was a cool thing I discovered. And I was like, oh, okay. And, and knowing your story and telling it well is one of the ways you will engage your audience. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to bring you that next week. The other thing you need to know to be successful in, in engaging your audience is to be consistent. If you only post content randomly, like, oh, once a month, maybe two times another month, or, you know, the audience doesn't know they can rely on you for, <laughs> to get their fix of content, right? So for, let's say you have a YouTube channel, you might tell them, you know, in, in this case, this talk is once a week, every week until January, I might, I might extend it. I don't know. There's so much, there's so much to say. Um, but so much of it is in my program that I, I don't want to just give you my whole program, but I will give you the broad strokes in these free talks once a week, but you can, you know, that I'm going to be here every Sunday at 11 until early January, giving you these free talks. That's one kind of content that I put out in the world. Um, on my YouTube channel, it's a little more random in that I try to put out at least one video a week besides my entrepreneurship stuff, like in my other uh, topics, because I have way too many topics on my YouTube channel, but I love them all. Um, uh, but you know, there's people I follow on YouTube, uh, like Cash Jordan, who's an amazing real estate broker in New York City. Cash puts out six apartment tours a week in New York City. And then he also occasionally puts out personal content about his life as a dad in New York City. So um, I find his stuff really compelling and I tune in and make sure I tune in for his six videos a week. He's got a huge amount of subscribers. And if you're a New York City fan like I am, <laughs> like if you're someone who sees yourself living there, that ends up being, you know, you're his audience, right? Um, so consistency, hugely important. Whatever it is for you, you might only be able to um, handle like putting out one piece of content a week, but that's enough for your audience to know, or people will send out an email a week or an email every day. Like that is consistency, right? But keep it coming and keep it um, valuable and keep it uh, coming at a regular pace. You also, um, of course, want a strategy for your content. And it, you know, um, it's funny because very often I've been flying by the seat of my pants. I decide, uh, you know, usually when I do my, you might be able to notice usually when I do my coffee talks, I don't really write them. I, I do the bullet points and I'm kind of not riffing because I know this stuff really well, but I'm, I'm, it's not pre-written and you can probably tell, but it doesn't matter. Um, I'm, I'm still hitting all the points I want to hit with you. And, um, it's just the fact that, uh, we're learning, you're learning, and I'm, I'm hopefully reaching you. That's what's important, right? So how scripted you get is up to you. Of course, my courses are very scripted, um, but my free talks are not because my free talks are usually the precursors to my courses. Like I will do free talks to help develop my course material. In this case, my course material is already developed in Coffee Break. I just want to bring you guys an informal, casual way to present, you know, to, to take in the broad strokes of what might be involved if you're not sure if you 
want to be a solopreneur yet, right? Um, so yeah, so if that means doing a live talk for once a week, and that's all your schedule can handle, that is something and it's going to start uh, attracting and, and engaging the people who follow you. Hopefully, I know we have, I have so many viewers on my different, on my other niches and entrepreneurship is such a crowded space. Um, and I get that. And it, I just am so passionate about it that I'm not going to stop creating content about entrepreneurship because it changed my life. Right. So, you know, even if I don't have like a gazillion people watching these lives every week, it doesn't matter to me. I'm still going to do them. Still going to keep putting them out there um, on my YouTube channel, on my Facebook page, uh, because it helps me. Um, it helps you and helps me. Um, even if it's just reaching out to two of you, that's fine. <laughs> All right. Um, it's reaching out to more, but you know, it's, it's such a crowded space. The more, the more, um, and I mean, in the marketplace and that's, that's okay. It's one of my passions. Um, the more niche you are, the, the more viewership you will get. So my script supervision talks get, get a massive amount of views, but you know, in real, you know, when you compare it to coffee break, uh, but I was already a known entity in the world. I'm one of like three people in the world who does what I do with script supervision, who is a veteran who also teaches and has been teaching for a very long time. So it, that's not a space I had to prove myself in. Right. But you, you know, you'll find yourself and I'm the kind of person who wants to prove myself to, <laughs> to you guys. So, um, you will find you're at different levels in whatever niche you're working in, but the more niche your niche is, the, the more audience you will start to get up front. Anyway, strategy for your content. You want to not be flying by the seat of your pants. Doesn't mean you have to write it, but you have to know your topic. You don't have to, but you ideally will know your topic levels, uh, in the weeks going forward. Sometimes I only plan my content for the two months ahead, right? I don't plan for the whole year. There, there are people who plan for their whole year on social media. So you want to strategize your content topics, right? And think about, and there's a whole, it's in my course, it's not in, I'm not going to be doing it in the free talks, but there are such amazing techniques you can use to really pinpoint the topics that will get a high number of the highest possible number of views, uh, some really, really great uh, ways to do that. But, you know, you can start asking, like, like in the exercise we did last week, where you talk to your ideal audience, they will tell you the, the kind of topics they want to see you talk about. So you can use those answers and create like a content calendar. Okay. On Saturday, I'm going to talk about pre-production on Sunday. I'm going to talk about production, like whatever your whatever it is in your niche area so you create a strategy and ideally you also block shoot and if you're not in film and you don't know what block shooting is it means let's say you're releasing something every Saturday you might shoot the next four Saturdays worth of content on one day because maybe there are 15 minute talks maybe they're a one hour interview, um, but you record more than one in a day so you get it done and then you can release them you know one week at a time but it's it's done. You're not scrambling every single week. So there are people who um, create content calendars for themselves. They, um, I did this once. It was lovely. Like, so you, you book like a holiday for yourself one day or two days at an Airbnb and you think about the year ahead and everything you want to say uh, on your podcast or in your business or with your courses and you brainstorm ideas for content and you decide what order you'll release them in. Um, and that's like before you execute them, that's just your content planning uh, calendar. And that's a really fun exercise to do, whether you go away for a weekend on your own, or you do it with a bunch of friends who also have businesses, like those are really fun things to do. So uh, you, or you can do it like me, which is I mean, I know the order of the talks I'm going to give, but I'm really executing them one week at a time, not written in this case, depends on the product I'm doing. Okay. I hope I gave you a lot of ideas on how to engage your audience. Of course, my course goes so much deeper, but um, next week we are going to talk about uh, creating your story. Um, and in, in terms of, uh, you know, we're starting to get towards your brand and um, larger uh course offerings or larger products that you might offer. Um, have a great Sunday. I'm going to go have my coffee. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, please do like, and subscribe. It will really help me uh, create more free content like this. Uh, thank you so much.